In this video, we increase the storage capacity of our virtual machine, the easy way. Hello everyone, and welcome to Tech Fix Flicks. In the last video in this series, we expanded the storage capacity of our virtual machine by entering commands at the Windows command prompt. In this video, we simplify that process by using tools available from within the VirtualBox user interface. Our starting point is the Catalina virtual machine created in a previous tutorial, which presently uses a 30GB dynamically allocated VDI file. If your storage isn't dynamically allocated, keep watching as we'll deal with this later. Whilst we're using a macOS guest here, this is equally applicable to any guest operating system, including Windows, Android and Linux. By comparison to the command line process shown in our previous tutorial, this method is incredibly straightforward, and from the main VirtualBox interface, we select the Tools menu from the top left, which opens by default to the Hard Disks tab, and we select the VDI file which we wish to adjust, in our case the Catalina Disk 001 file. Its current virtual size is shown in the upper and lower right corners of the dialog, and we can increase the size by amending the lower value, or by dragging the slider to the right. The only constraint here, as always, is the quantity of storage available from the physical host. We make a modest increase to 35GB before clicking Apply. With the change applied, we have now very simply increased the storage available to our virtual machine. It's worth noting that these changes apply outside the virtual machine, and it will still be necessary to use a disk management utility once inside the virtual machine to configure and allocate the new storage, and we demonstrate this process using a Windows client in our previous video. We mentioned the need for dynamically allocated storage, and attempting this process on a fixed virtual hard drive type will result in an error message. For this reason, we typically advocate using dynamically allocated files in our tutorials. Nevertheless, it's very straightforward to convert your existing fixed file to a dynamic one by copying it, either by using the copy icon, or by right clicking the VDI file and selecting the copy option. With the copy dialog displayed, we select the option to switch to expert mode. Here we can alter the properties of the copied file, allowing us to switch from a dynamic to a fixed file, or, crucially, from a fixed to dynamic type, and we can alternate between the two on each occasion that the file is copied. Once the file type is set to dynamic, we can then change the maximum disk size using the method shown at the start of the tutorial. To swap out our original VDI file, we make use of the release function. Whilst to swap in the copied version, we use the add disk option. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing by clicking the logo on screen now. If you'd like to see more, there are two suggestions currently on screen. If you have a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. You're also welcome to follow us on Twitter. Until your next tech fix, goodbye.